where's Tulum headed? There's so many really good, just smart business decisions. I think Tulum is going to surpass. That's a bold statement. I, it's a bold statement, but I see it. What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Living the Dream, where we talk about everything Mexico lifestyle and real estate. My name is Matt. I'm the co-founder of the Elements Real Estate Group. And my name is Lev. I'm the other co-founder of the Elements Real Estate Group. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about everything Tulum, okay? Not just where it is now, but where it started, where it is now, and where it's going why we're investing in it and let's kick off with you've been here a little longer than i have as everybody knows and i heard a couple of stories of when you went to tulum back in the day yep and what it was like so why don't you share what you saw back then and when it was it's changed significantly it's been a completely different city from when i first moved here in 2013 which was 11 years ago now i remember this is crazy to even think about when i first moved here we live in Playa del Carmen with my wife, but we would go to Tulum on weekends. And we were able to basically go down there. It was all dirt roads. There was no paved roads except the main highway that goes through the town. Yeah. And we would go on the beach and would actually start camping there. Camping? Like what, with tents? With and tents. You what? could rent out like a, <laughs> a space where there's like other people with tents. And it was like, I think, 300 pesos for the night. So you bring your own tent, you bring your own food. We had to buy a, one of those little um, electrical stovetops. Yep, yeah, yeah. A battery pack for our cell phones back then, whatever they were. And yeah, we, we slept on the beach in the tent. And this Holy. was only 11 years ago. Holy smokes. So back 11 years ago, did they have restaurants in the hotels? Or it wasn't even probably a hotel zone back then. No, it we'll was, but it was in its like infancy stages. So there was only maybe a handful of beach clubs, a handful of restaurants right on the water there. There was a lot of restaurants in downtown, mm. not as much as right now, obviously, but still a lot of taco stands, a lot of that. But the main thing that changed a lot over the last 11 years, A, is the population. So back in 2012, the population of Tulum was about twelve to thirteen thousand people. Oh, that's a small. That's a small town. It's a jungle town. Yeah, it was a yeah. beach town. That was it was. And nowadays, the population of Tulum is at fifty-five thousand people. So it's more than tripled. Now, is that fifty-five thousand locals living there full time, or is that fifty-five thousand with all tourism and inhabitants flying in? So people that are renting long term, whether it's from North America, Europe, or whatever it is, or other parts of Mexico, and then also locals as well, because a lot of growth that has happened in Tulum has happened because of the jobs that were created. So people right. are moving there and living there, whether it's construction, whether it's administration, whether it's accounting, whatever the job may be. So now a lot of people are making Tulum an actual home. Mm. And 11 years ago, it was not. It was a beach town. I mean, you could, the only locals <laughs> live there. Like, you, <laughs> yeah, you were a tourist there. People looked yeah. at you as if they've never seen one before. Even back in the day, like... <sighs> I can't remember hearing about Tulum. No. Right? And then I think I started coming into play maybe, or at least on my radar, maybe five or six years ago. Exactly, but yeah. I just figured it was just a small town. There was no tourism going on. Yep. And it is what it was, right? It just it was just that small town feel. But now where has Tulum come? Like Obviously, we know 55,000 people, and that's continuing to grow. Yeah. And, you know, grow at a rapid rate. Right. So where do you think it's going to be going in the next three to five years? Well, before we get into that, do you know why Tulum got put on the map? I do. Why? But people watching. Tell us why. <laughs> okay. All right. Putting me on the spot. Uh, well, let's go back to when I was, when we first met. Yep. And I, we were looking to invest here. Everybody knows our story from episode one. You brought up Tulum and there's a three key factors for me anyways, from a real estate investor point of view that really caught my attention. One was back then it was the uh, idea of the infrastructure. So when big major infrastructure is built, it's a good time to invest. It transforms cities. Exactly. Yeah. So the Trend Maya or the Maya train, the international airport were two major infrastructure pieces that were actually just kind of put out there by the city of Tulum. They weren't built yet when I learned about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're just getting to, to it now. The second reason was the finite amount of real estate. Mm -hmm. So Tulum is a jungle town, 
and it is building down towards the beach with right. all these new developments and really cool stuff. And so, and on either side, you have protected lands, right? right? And I'll let you explain that more. And then the third reason for me was what they were building. Correct. It was different than Playa del Carmen. It was different than Cancun. It was different than Puerto Vallarta and Cabo. It was a. It was almost like this war of developers as who could build the coolest yep. things, the, the coolest most developments. Yeah, like lots of curves and and different stories. And now it's just that was a few years ago, and now some of the stuff that's coming out is spectacular. Ridiculous. So those yeah. were the three reasons because it was building an identity that I couldn't find anywhere else in Mexico, mm -hmm. and it was in the in in its infancy. So why uh, why do you think Tulum got put on the map? Tulum got put on the map because of what it dot like its soul so to speak right influencers came here mm. and started taking photos and videos on instagram and in 2018 is when it really started popping up right. in 2018 is when you know we started hearing of celebrities staying on the beach like bieber and aniston yeah and we also saw a lot of other athletes were staying here because nobody really knew about it and then because of social media it got put on the map why it offers unique activities like cenotes we have some of the best cenotes in all of mexico how many cenotes are in tulum there's a thousand apparently that and a bunch of them are still undiscovered <laughs> yeah so there's a, a, a several that are and they're great and they're you know they, they relax the soul and it's fresh water in ground caves on top of that the beaches in tulum are unbelievable yeah i mean there is nothing like them i love the beaches in cancun I am an, I would say, okay fan of the beaches in Playa del Carmen, mm -hmm. but the beaches in Tulum are just next level. I mean, you have 50 feet of walking and then another 50 feet of water and you're only knee high. Yeah. And it's pure white sand, crystal clear water. Yeah. And the beaches are so well maintained. Yeah. Even when we have seaweed, which we've had some bad seaweed seasons in the past. They've cleaned them up and it's still doable and swimmable. The government's doing a lot of initiatives to prevent that moving forward. We didn't get hit as hard as Florida or some other parts, but it's working because this year, right now we're in seaweed season and there is a little bit, but definitely not enough to like deter people from swimming. So those were the two, I would say, reasons why it got put on the map is the influencers, the beaches. And then the third reason is the jungle vibe of it, mm. right? So you look at places like Cabo and nothing against Cabo. I love Cabo. Yep, I go there on the, all the time. I've been going there for a long time, but it's uh, more of like an Arizona vibe, right? You got palm trees. It's sunny. It's pretty. It's great. And mm. it's a great place to go visit and invest. But Tulum is so lush compared to Cabo, for example. Right. Playa del Carmen, another concept. We both live here yep. and it's a <clears throat> concrete jungle, right? Building, 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 few palm trees, building, building, building. Whereas in Tulum, there's actually bylaws of how much you can build and how much you can build on each plot of land. They're doing a really good job of having a lot of these developments being green, green, green. So when you wake up, you hear the birds, you hear the jungle, you hear natural sounds, and you just feel different. It's like a different, it's not busy, it's, it's tranquil, it's peaceful almost, right? So those would be the three reasons, is the jungle vibe of it, the influencers, and the beaches, on top of all the other activities there is to do. You mentioned your three reasons of investing in Tulum. Yeah. So my three reasons are very similar to yours. Tulum has a vibe that is unprecedented, and it's a different demographic that goes there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you saw this. You know, we, we don't have a lot of families there yet. Uh, Playa is much more family-friendly. So is Cancun. So is Cabo. Um, so it's a different demographic that goes there. And my number one reason is that in whole vibe of Tulum, of people who go there and, the, you know, who stays there and all of that. My number two reason is the finite amount of land, just like you said. Yeah. So I don't know if you know what they just built recently on one side of it and what there is already there naturally on the other side of it. Do you know? Uh, I, uh, I think I know, but tell, tell me. Okay. So on one side, which is the south side of Tulum, they have a biosphere, which is natural. It's been there for years and it's fairly protected. So there's no real estate going there ever again. On the other side of the three main roads that go to the beach, you have the Tulum Jaguar Park. And the Jaguar Park is four times the size of Central Park in New York. I did not know that stat. I did know the biosphere, actually, and I did know Jaguar Park because yep. that connects into the Tulum ruins. So that's never going to be touched. Exactly. But I did not know it was four times the size of Central Central Park in yep. New York. Wow. It's massive. And that alone, if you have 
no real estate going here or development and no development going here and you only have three main streets that go to the beach mm. i mean what's going to happen in 10 years so you can't build more real estate you can't physically build and yeah. it's like okay now prices are going to go up and up and up and the third reason i invested in tulum is because it's still i would say in its infancy stage of affordability um, it's starting to creep up. I mean, there's now units that are becoming quite expensive, mm -hmm. um, that generate a lot of money and that appreciate quite well. It's affordable. It's, it's affordable, affordable yeah. still. Like think about Cancun 20 years ago. Oh, think about oh. Playa, even Playa del Carmen. Oh, uh, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. That's kind of what you're buying into when you're buying in Tulum. Yeah. In an area where, like you had mentioned, we finally mentioned a few times that there's that finite amount of real estate. Yep. That That's from a real estate investment point of view, the infrastructure, the finite amount of real Huge. estate. Those two things alone yep. are going now. And it's crazy because you have neighborhoods like Aldeazama all built up, beautiful roads, all lit up, nice jungle, very lush, very green, like you mentioned. And then you have other areas like Region 15, Region 8. They're still jungle. Yep. And you're, you'll are you be going down this dirt road. And, and if you can see past the dirt road, yep. if you can see past that, you know, it's kind of jungle. You're like, you know, there's a couple of construction things going on. And then you come around a corner and there's this beautiful, just stunning building yep. or a villa yep. or whatever. And you go online and you take a look at it and it literally looks like paradise. Yeah inside so if you have the vision yep. to see three to five years ahead when the roads roads are paved when the sidewalks are in yep that is going to be a very smart investment well you know that uh, that saying right oh i wish i bought or i wish <laughs> yeah. i bought five years ago i mean i remember when i first moved here 11 years ago you know you had studios at seventy nine thousand, right wow. they were pre-selling like ve the very first ones and then 89 and then 99 now the average studio is 190, 180. Yeah. Right? So that's just in pre-sale. I mean, they're all going up. Two bedrooms used to be around the 200 grand mark, um, which is like, you know, oh, I'll get a unit in Mexico for 200 grand. Sure, yeah. yeah. It's, it's an easy price point to swallow. Now two bedrooms are going anywhere between 350 and 750, 800, yeah. depending on the building. So the same thing's going to happen there, and I'm already seeing it, you know? Um, I've had clients that have bought in pre-construction, and I'll give you a prime example. I've got one lady, she bought... Um, a one bedroom penthouse for 270 three years ago and I was like oh man that's a lot of money one like, bedroom yeah penthouse, one yeah. bedroom I don't think that's you know and she's like no you know what I want something for myself I want to rent it out blah 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 so great her unit right now by the developer one of the last few is units in that building is being sold for four hundred and forty five thousand dollars holy that's 200 <laughs> grand in equity and somebody's gonna buy it because of the finite amount of real estate that's sure there. so sure yeah it's it's wild what's happening so let's talk about what's gonna happen now like mm -hmm. in the near future and yep. then long-term future okay do you follow the mayor of tulum on this i do okay. of course so I message him every day. I, I know you do. Right? I message him every day. Uh, but he reads it, doesn't respond, but he reads it or somebody in his team reads it. And um, obviously the roads are a big factor in Tulum, right? The other day, I believe three days ago, he came out publicly mm. and said, I am investing into the infrastructure of Tulum immediately. Over 150,000 square meters of roads will be paved and lit immediately. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that is, I don't know if you guys know this, but for us, people that live here and work there, every time we hear something like that, it just, it's almost like almost emotional. Yeah. Oh, I, I hear you. You know, you're I like, you. really? Like it's going to be done and he's going to do this. And basically what's going to happen with, the whole thought of Tulum is it's going to turn to a, a real jungle city. Yeah. It's not going to be like a jungle city with lacking infrastructure. Yeah. It's going to be a yeah. real jungle city. Well, we were just coming back from uh, from Tulum yesterday. Yeah. And we took a video posted on our on our Instagram. Yeah. By the way, if you want to follow us on Instagram, Elements Real Estate MX, they were paving the roads. They had big machines out. Yeah. They were leveling them, flattening them, and already getting started literally within 48 hours of that announcement, yep. which was huge. And because... And the mayor of Tulum is so smart, in my opinion. He's done three really unique things that are not just going to protect the identity of Tulum, but it's going to protect the investors. Yes. And this is what I think they are, and we can elaborate a little bit more. Yes. Number one, and you kind of mentioned with the bylaws, number one is that you can't build over five stories. Yes. Oh, that's okay. amazing. Cancun, 
they didn't have that bylaw. So it's all skyscrapers everywhere and hotels that are massive. And it just, it, Cancun lost what it was. Yeah. So you can't build over five stories, which is really cool. And the next thing is preserving the jungle, which is really, really important yes. to keep the vibe of Tulum. So Absolutely. a lot of per hectare acre, you have to keep a certain percentage of greenery within the development in order to get a permit, permit. to yep. construct. How amazing is that? Yep. And then the third thing was um, the roads, because it's been like a big thing over and over of the dirt roads, bringing clients out in the jungle and you're going up and down and, and maybe things were, uh, some buildings were completed and your Airbnb guests were going, geez, it was a bit of a trek to get there. Yeah. But when we got there, we had the best time. And the mayor had said, look, we're going to wait until at least 60% or so of the uh, construction in these really uh, areas that uh, need infrastructure were completed or they're going to wait till it was completed and then they were going to put it in and he has come out and said we're going to build these roads yep. because he's seeing what's going on he's yep. seeing the money that's coming into tulum well with the airport and the train i mean you can't leave the roads like that you yeah you just can't i mean there's 28 private jet hangers in the airport of tulum so if you have <laughs> flight coming and they're like Oh my goodness, what's all these roads? What's happening here? I mean, you want to have a good first impression on them. Yeah. So Yeah. I think there's there's so many really good, just smart business decisions that they're doing because if you look at Playa del Carmen, it was built on the water yeah. and then built backwards, backwards right? Yeah. Towards the highway. And so you have these big buildings up there and they're they're coming uh going back and then on the other side of the highway you have other communities and yeah. whatnot. But in Tulum, it started off as a jungle town by the highway. Yeah. Right? With twelve thousand people. Yeah. Like it's it's a few kilometers or miles to get to the beach. Yeah. And now that is what is being constructed and, and being built up. And so the fact that the mayor is so open to what he's doing he's not covering it or not ignoring anybody and he's on it he's not ignoring he, anything he's on it he's on it yeah. and he understands that for the amount of foreign investment that's coming down here things have to be brought to a much higher standard of what we would expect as an investor if i was going to invest in a up-and-coming town I want to know what direction the government's going. Yes. Right. Are they responding? Are they actually, are there workers? And now you drive into Tulum and it's temporary, but they put a big roundabout at the beginning. They're putting sidewalks in, they have bridges going for, um, uh, lanes of, uh, easier uh, connectivity. Yeah. Easy, with the easy, train easy, and the airport. traffic and everything. Yep. Yeah. And it's just so amazing to, to see, yep. especially on, um, you know what the property taxes are in when you buy in in Tulum. Very low, very low. Agreed I, with everything you just said. There's um, something also to be said of uh, the neighborhoods of Tulum. So you mentioned a couple. I would say there's about six major neighborhoods in Tulum, mm -hmm. south of the south of the highway. And I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Okay. All right. So, what is your favorite neighborhood? If you were investing, where would you invest in Tulum right now? Okay. Yeah, that's putting me on the spot, but I'm going to do it from my highest ROI point of view. Okay. Okay. Because some people come and want to invest and they're only going to be here a week or two of the year. They want the full return on investment. Some are going to be here for the winter. Some are going to be here for a month or friends and family. So yeah. depending on where you kind of fit in that spectrum is where I would suggest investing. Right? And talk to a good broker that knows what he's talking well, about well she knows what he's talking about yeah we're gonna get into that a little later because i've seen some stuff out there that i'm like one it's completely false yeah it's not true and the people don't even own the land they're trying to sell it and they yeah. got all these different things going we'll on we'll talk so, about it later yeah so that'll be maybe a whole other uh episode, episode. yep right now for Long term, if I wanted to, something to be ready in two to three years in pre-construction, I'm looking at Region 15 and Region 8 okay. because it is the most underdeveloped in the sense of infrastructure. It's square lots everywhere, but there are some really unique things on the radar. Best and bang for your buck, no? Best bang for your buck per square meter um, price yeah. is much lower than it is in some of the other neighborhoods like Tulum 101. Oh, yeah. Um, Tulum 101 is going to be obviously uh, beautiful. Premier. Aldea Zama and so on, even the archaeological zone starting to to get up there, right? Yep. Because it, once things start getting built up and you have your commercial spaces and you have your restaurants and, and um, you know, your Oxos or 7-Elevens and you have these beautiful different buildings, the next, it kind of almost is like a little platform. Yes. Like the next building kind of gets a little more and, it, and the price per square meter starts creeping up. 
And so yes, bang, best bang for my buck right now is in region 15 or region eight, some really beautiful developments taking place and you can get a really good deal um, over there. Cool. What about you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, you asked me the same question. Yeah. What, what would you, what would you, so what it would depends, you right it depends now? what you want. And in the sense of, okay, real estate is a marathon. It's not a sprint, right? If yeah. you're buying a flip, you're in the wrong market. This is not the market where you want to buy something and flip it right away. If you're looking to get instant cash flow, mm. you want to start making high returns. If you're buying a condo, you should be looking at Aldea Zama and surroundings. Those are the best, I would say, cash flow units right now. They're in a place where you have everything you need. Mm. You've got uh, tourists coming in, using it. They can walk to restaurants. They can walk to stores, grocery stores, all that stuff. Yeah. If you're looking more for a long-term investment, whether it's land or a house or a villa or even condos that are not ready now. Yes. Right? They're probably ready in two, two, three years. Yeah. Then definitely you should be looking at areas like Region 15 and Region 8. And the reason being is, just like you said, you have a lower price per square meter right now. For example, I'll give you a perfect example. A four-bedroom house in Region 15, they were selling them for a couple of years ago, a year and a half, for about four ninety nine. That same four bedroom house in Aldea Zama is like eight fifty nine. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's, it's almost double. It's almost double. Yeah. So if you're looking to get into the market and you want to hold your property for five, ten years, your best bet is Region Fifteen, Region Eight. Now, if you want to get into the market and start cash flowing instantly, mm-hmm. you want to be in the areas that are already developed, mm-hmm. such as Aldea Zama, La Valletta, archaeological zone, like you said, a Holistica, even Holistica. Yeah, it's yeah. close to downtown. So those are the spots that you want to get into. So that's what I would say. I would say long term plays. Are are 15 and 8 mm-hmm. and then if you're doing more of a instant cash flow play you want to be close to town and close to services yeah that makes sense yeah absolutely let's talk quickly about some other major infrastructure that's coming because we talked about roads airport yes. train yes but for a lot of people uh healthcare is a big one yes so yes there are you know different uh places to uh get healthcare if you you know cut yourself clinics or, hospitals, clinics, yeah. hospitals. they're smaller they're not large scale ones yeah. yeah and there was a big announcement not long ago as to, and it just goes to show where the mayor of Tulum is taking this. Please share with us what the announcement is. Share with the audience. <laughs> there is a massive Tulum General Hospital ready to, or basically confirmed that it's going to be built there. Great. Right. Do you know how much they're spending on it? Tell us. Tell the audience. I think how much. it was, I, uh, no, see, this is where we need to have somebody over there getting the facts and, and stats ready to go for us. But I believe it was 162 million pesos okay. is what they're going to invest, which. I don't know uh, off the top of my math, but I remember reading an article on that. And yeah. it's going to be a big, major hospital, good. which is really good because I think even though Tulum, like you said, kind of isn't there. We're seeing more and more families there. Yeah. But one of the big things when people travel is they want to have close health care. They want to, if something happens, they want to be able to get to a hospital Absolutely. very quickly and not have to be brought Not that you client. can't right now. You still can. It's just on a smaller scale. Yeah. Much smaller scale. Yeah. yeah. And then why don't you tell us about some of the malls that are also coming up? Yeah. So, I mean, Tulum is really trying to be a luxury market, right? It's trying to differentiate itself from everywhere else. So there is a brand new mall that's going to be opening up in Tulum 101, which mm. is going to be a luxury mall. At the end of the day, it's going to have all of your luxury stores, cafes, boutiques. So that's good. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you know, Tulum is gent- being gentrified, etc. It's like, well, the city you're living in was at some point a forest or a jungle. Yeah, exactly. And there was nothing there <laughs> yeah, except no bears doubt. and wolves running around. And now it's, you know, Toronto, New York, Chicago, whatever it is. Yeah. So it's just part of a natural growth and economy of any place that's developing. Um, so that's the first mall. And then there's another mall which is being built right on the other side of Holistica, mm-hmm. which is a little bit more south of downtown. And that's going to be a, gosh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but 40,000 square meters, which is, I believe, 400,000 square feet of commercial spaces. There's going to be wow. a shopping center there, which is going to have a, tons of parking, obviously. Yep. Um, gyms, cafes, stores like your Zara's and your H&M's. It's also going to have your um, uh, cinema. Uh, wow. cinema this is going in there, which we don't happen to lose. Right yeah, now. yeah. So that's going to be one. A big grocery store, too. Of course. Massive, yeah, yeah. massive grocery store. And then there's a couple of smaller scale malls that are being opened up as well, just to have more accessibility mm. and more connectivity for tourists, locals to have, you know, not just one Chidrawi right now and one strip mall, but have yeah. multiple of them. So where's Tulum headed? Well, let's talk about that. I think Tulum is going to surpass Playa del Carmen 
Really? I think Tulum is going to... That's a bold statement. I, I know. I like it. I think Tulum is going to surpass um, Cancun with time. Obviously, not overnight. The reason I say that is because when you plop a airport that has the capacity to bring 6 million people in the first mm. three years and confirmed in the plans is to have an airport in Tulum to have 20 million visitors per year in the yeah. next decade, that's big. That's yeah. huge. And think about Cancun for the last 30, 40 years. Think about Cabo for the last 70 years. Think about uh, Puerto Vallarta for the last 70 years. I mean, these towns were tiny. And yeah. Now they're massive. I mean, Cabo is a luxury destination and it has an airport 25 minutes away. How far away is the airport of Tulum? 25, 25 minutes. minutes away. <laughs> no traffic. So I think that train and that airport are going to turn Tulum into a more desirable place to live, mm. more desirable place to raise families because there are schools opening up, more desirable place to visit because of everything it offers. It's a bold statement, but I see it. I see where it's, what's happened in five years. What's happened in the last five years there yeah. took Playa maybe 15 years to get to, you know? So it's the downpour of money from investors, from institutions, from all sorts of walks of life is pretty impressive. Yeah, actually, and following up on what you just said, institutional money. Yeah. When institutional money starts bringing funds into Tulum, yeah. that was another key factor for me. When all of a sudden we go to a development with a team and we'd be you know, learning about the developer, learning about other projects they had done and what they're releasing, and they say, oh, by the way, these first three floors are sold out. Yeah. It's like, well, pardon me, like we just got here. To who? Right? Yeah. To, to who? And he said, oh, it's institutional, right? And, and, and hedge funds and private uh, equity. And I'm like... Wow. So if those kind of companies don't make bold moves like that, unless they know what's in the future, exactly. that they're going to make good returns. Yeah. And so that was what really got me also excited. That'd be another fourth factor. I'll, yeah. And I'll add to that one too. And we'll probably wrap it up sooner um, than later here is the, the hotels that are coming. Mm. That's something that's super important to touch on. If you're thinking of investing in Tulum right now and you're thinking, oh, I don't know if it's a good investment. Know this. There are major hotel brands that are going to be opening up their hotels in Tulum. Yeah. Everything from Marriott's to Hilton's to Hyatt's to Secrets to Dreams to all, all kinds. We recently had Faena launch in Tulum 101 where one bedrooms are going close to $700,000. Um, Faena is a luxury hotel brand international and they're in Miami. And they're like one of the nicest hotels in Miami. And the other one that's like taking off right now that everyone is super excited about is Nobu. So Nobu Hotel and Restaurants and Residences are coming. Uh, Robert De Niro announced it. His partner announced it, uh, who's the head chef of the whole company. And it just gives you an idea. Like if you're thinking of investing, I'm pretty sure that these mega companies have thought about oh. everything there is to think about, Yeah, you know, for you. Yeah, exactly. Do you think we get Robert De Niro on this podcast? Robert, <laughs> if you're listening, we'd love to chat with you. Um, we'd love to talk to you about Nobu, but more importantly about Tulum and why you got into the market here and why you guys are going to open up. So We'll see you here soon. Reach out. Reach out. <laughs> or have yeah. your people talk to our people. Yeah, our people will get in touch with your people. <laughs> so yeah, I think, um, you know, Tulum was nothing. Uh, yeah. It was a great beach town, uh, or sorry, jungle town by the beach. Tulum is now a expanding market where there's lots of money being poured in here. And in the future, I think Tulum is going to be a top vacation destination in about five to 10 years when everything's built out, completely mm. done. There's no more land. It's going to be the spot. Yeah, hands down. I couldn't agree more. Last thing that we I sh we should kind of bring up, and then we'll wrap up. Because here's the deal: we were doing kind of an overview of Tulum, right? But like on future episodes, we're going to go into more detail on yes. a lot of these different things, right? And and really have a, and do a deep dive into them. But one other major thing that is coming very soon is the Green School. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is going to be right in the middle. Eighteen hundred person wait list on the Green School. Is that 1800 it? Eighteen hundred person. Yeah. So the Green School has how many locations in the world? Four. This is going to be the fourth one. You got New Zealand, uh, South Africa, and Bali. Bali. If you don't know what the Green School is, go on their website, take a look. It's a new way of learning for kids and for you know 
just it, it, a new way of education. Yeah. So right now it is still a bit of a party scene in Tulum. You have more and more families coming. You got all of your music festivals, which we're going to have to talk about uh, on one episode. That's going to take like six episodes. <laughs> right. You have your bachelor party. Diplo, but... if you want to be on the <laughs> on the podcast, hit us up. Our yeah. people will talk to your people. Exactly. Um, you have a lot of your holistic community, which is again, uh, and uh, yoga, yogis from around the world flying in uh, to do ceremonies and all. That's a whole other episode as well. Yes. Maybe we'll bring uh, some local to to come in and talk about those yeah about retreats and stuff yeah. and ceremonies yeah yeah you have your bachelor parties your bachelor party so you have all different types of things but then you see this big school getting a lot of positive press yes with an 1800 person wait list and to me that's going to really start attracting obviously uh families moving to tulum long term yeah which is going to continually help the the growth of of the city yeah and be another destination yeah point. like i said it's going to be a place where people are gonna want to move i mean yeah. it's got the the it's got everything that you need in the future it's not there yet definitely not there yet but it's if you're thinking about future right if you bought something in let's say austin before austin became austin if you yeah. bought something in vegas before vegas was something could yeah. you imagine where tulum is going to be in 10 20 30 years from yeah now? So. i couldn't imagine I, well i can't imagine I, I know exactly where it's going because i'm here every day in the trenches learning and seeing what's taking taking place and that's yeah. one of the reasons we started this podcast so that people can have accurate information yes timely information yes. and be able to from just, an expat perspective too yeah right? from yeah from exactly and from a foreign investor both you and i have bought lots in in tulum yes. we're building stuff right now we have a lot of other things on the go we're doing custom builds we're doing um our elements developments uh, team which is an arm of our elements real estate group is doing some incredible villas that are literally built specifically yes. for roi so if you want more information if you're listening to this please reach out we can give you uh, a rundown on on that yeah yeah cool well, this was another fun episode. Another fun episode, bro. Well done. And um, guys, if you're watching this or listening, please let us know what we should talk about, right? Yes. If you want us to dive more into schools or infrastructure or roads or certain developments, food, let us know. Food, food's going to be a big one. Transportation's going to be a big one. The yeah. public beaches versus beach clubs. Oh my yeah. God, we got so much to talk about. Too much. And um, yeah, well, thanks for everybody for listening to Live in the Dream podcast where we talk about everything Mexico lifestyle and real estate. Until next time.